I fucked up the, uh, the audio again. I fucked it up again. I didn't record it properly, so it's going to be quiet at some points. And, uh, yeah. I, uh, I suck. Next episode, it'll be good, I swear. It's okay to be frustrated every now and then. What the hell? Whoa! Oh, it's too loud of my ear, guy. And I can't scream because I lost my voice. Welcome to the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast, everyone. <laughs> Episode 195. Episode 195. I can't even yell. I can't even yell even if I want to. Why? Because I'm fucking sick, dude. I'm fucking sick. And I'm doing it anyway. I'm doing it anyway. I can talk like this, but as soon as I try to go any higher than this, as soon as I try to go any higher than this, it just sounds like this. I can't do it. <laughs> uh, here's today's card. It's tradition around here to show you the card. But it's not tradition to show you what's on the card, but you'll find out anyway. Why? Well, because we'll talk about it. How's my mic levels? They seem okay. Should I turn the gain up a little bit, or is that fine? Uh... Why is it not adjusting? La 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 I don't stay sick for very long. And then it kept, it stayed. It stayed and I'm still sick, so I'm like, fuck this. If I don't record today, I'm going to go another week without f recording a podcast. And we don't want to fall down that rabbit hole again. All right, look what happened last time we fell down that rabbit hole. We went two fucking years. Two years without recording an episode. Now, as I hear my voice right now, it sounds off. It sounds shitty. But maybe through the mic, it might sound normal. I've been blowing my nose nonstop for the past 17 days. Oh, I've been waiting to slurp that mug. That mug root beer. And this don't fit in the mug. The mug don't fit in the mug. It barely fits. Barely fits in. Yeah. <coughs> um. Whoa, Steve. We got out of bird ham. Uh... A little disgruntled for two reasons. One, I'm sick. Two, I spent the last hour fucking around with the audio again. Oh, shit. Oh. This, I swear to God, this better be recording. Yeah, it is. It is. It has to. It has to be. I tested. I swear to God, if it's not recording... Oh my god, I'd shit my pants. But it is. It for sure is. Because I can see it. I can smell it. I can taste it. I can hear it. <laughs> oh, I'd shit my pants. Oh, I'd shit. I'd shit my little fucking trousers. You guys got any bags of bird hands? It's working. I can see it's working. We ran 
not a bird ham. It's for sure working. But I spent the last fucking hour fucking around with inputs and settings. Oh, because cause you guys don't even know, but the last episode, it didn't record the audio properly, even though I thought it did. And it, uh, what, who gives a fuck? I want to talk to you about something. I want to talk to you about a crazy thing that happened to me. So right before I got sick, it was a Wednesday night. Last Wednesday. It was a Wednesday night. Well, let's, let's, pull, it, let's pull it back a bit. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's pull it back a bit. Um, the Wednesday day... During my uh, uh, during my work crusades, a fella came across my path, and he said to me, "I'm so sorry about the sniffling. I know it's disgusting, and I sometimes do it on a regular basis, but it's going to be happening a lot. I'll try my best to avoid it, but my nose is obnoxiously clogged, and it won't stop filling up with boogers." While I was at work, a guy came across my path and he said to me, Hey fella, I've got some edibles. There's a whole backstory behind it of why he decided to give me these edibles, but uh, he's a trustworthy guy and he gave me the edibles. Of course I knew what I was getting myself into. But that Wednesday night, I, uh, without even thinking, I ate the homemade edibles. They were two cookies, two ginger, ginger, uh, uh, what do you call those cookies? Ginger snaps? Uh, I guess. But they were soft. All right? And they were big. They were like this big. He gave me two of them. Uh. Now, normally with homemade edibles, you don't know what you're getting into ever in terms of potency. And normally I would take a quarter of the cookie, if that, to test it out first. Uh, but it was late at night. I just came back from somewhere and I was ready to go bed, go to bed. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to eat both of the cookies just to knock myself out and go to sleep. So that's what I did. I ate both the cookies and uh, then I went to bed. Well, I watched some TikToks and then I went to bed. And I didn't even think about it. I forgot about it. And about uh, an hour, an hour and a half later, it started to kick in. And I'm like, oh yeah, I took, I ate those edibles. I forgot about that. I ate those edibles. And I'm like, okay, well, it should help me go to sleep soon. And then some more time passes, about another half hour, and then it's like, now I'm really starting to get high. I'm really starting to get high. It's probably midnight, or maybe it's about 12.30 a.m. at this point. 12.30 a.m. and now it's Thursday, obviously, because it's 12.30. And the high is starting to kick in. So I'm letting it kick in. I'm letting it... I'm letting myself get high. And I'm like, okay. These are pretty potent. These are pretty potent edibles. I'm like, okay. But I've been down this road before. It should be fine. I've been high many a time. And I've been overly high many a time. All right, about another half an hour passes and now it's getting more intense. And I'm like, okay, hang in there. You know, I'm like, I'm, I'm meditating to myself. I'm doing my regular ritual where you talk to yourself to calm yourself down. You're like, okay, this is nothing. We've been, we've been way worse high than this before. This is nothing. It's all going to be good. All right, another half an hour passes. Now I'm even more fucking higher than before, and it's getting worse. And I'm like, okay, this is this is getting a little too intense. I don't know how I feel about this, but uh, let's keep on trucking. You know, it's about somewhere around two, two two thirty ish now. We'll say, let's just say it's two thirty a.m. Okay, and I'm fighting. I'm fighting with myself trying to not get paranoid but the paranoia is starting to kick in oh and it's really starting to kick in and i'm like okay well i'm about to have a panic attack but i've been here before 
so we can handle it. So again, I try to talk myself through it. Now, it's 3 a.m. It hits me so fucking hard, I didn't know what to do. At this point, I'm like, okay, I can't talk my way out of this one. I am in full-blown panic attack mode. And I am extremely high. But still, I'm like, I have been here before. I know this is just weed, and I'm just having a bad trip. All right? 3.30 rolls around, and it it's just getting worse than... It's worse than any of it. It's it's getting worse and worse. 3.30. I'm now like, not only am I full-blown panic attack, but my whole body is shivering, like jittering, like, and I cannot stop it. I'm freezing cold. I've got the blankets on me. I'm shivering and full-blown panic attack. Now at this point, I'm thinking like, fuck, did he lace this shit? Can I trust this guy? And then all these thoughts are going in my head about pretty much every problem that I have unresolved in my life came to the forefront of my mind. You know what it's like to have these panic attacks on weed. Four o'clock hits. It's still getting worse. It's so bad at this point. I'm I'm maniacally shivering. My jaw is clattering. I, I can't, if I, when I close my eyes, it hurts. I have to have the light on and I have to have my eyes open staring at the ceiling because as soon as I close my eyes, I feel like I want to puke and it it physically hurts to close my eyes. So I'm sitting here with the light on, staring at the ceiling in my bed, shivering maniacally, jaw is like clattering, full-blown panic attack, like the worst panic attack I've ever had. Every problem I have is on the forefront of my mind. I'm focused on it. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to get fired when I go back to work. This guy fucking laced me. All my family's going to die. My friends are going to, you know, like my friends are going to stop being friends with me. I'm going to be alone. I'm going to end up fucking jobless and broke with nowhere to go. I'm going to be homeless. All these thoughts are going through my head. Just completely uh, delusional fucking paranoia that you get from weed. Okay, 4.30 hits. It gets worse. Okay, imagine everything I just described, but 10 times as much. Five, five o'clock hits. It's getting worse. Mind you, it's Thursday. I still have to go to work. When I ate these cookies just before midnight, I'm like, eh, I'll sleep it off and go to work tomorrow. It'll be fine. No, it's now 5 a.m. I haven't got an ounce of sleep not even a second of sleep and I'm thinking oh fuck I gotta get up in a few hours this better wear off five o'clock hits nope it's I'm more high than I've ever fucking been in my entire life full it's still full-blown panics full-blown shivers everything 530 hits it's still getting worse it's not keep letting up at all so I get up out of bed but it's fucking hard Okay, I take the blankets off and I'm just shivering. I'm shaking. I'm like, oh, oh, fuck. I go to stand up. I can barely see. Everything's like waving and moving. I shuffle like painfully into the kitchen. I get myself a big glass of water because I'm fucking thirsty. Okay, you work up a goddamn sweat having a the panic attack that I'm having, plus the shivers and jitters and all this stuff on top of it. So I get some water. I drink a little bit of it. I just, I can't get it down. And uh, I shuffle my way back into the bed, and I'm like, fuck, I got to get some sleep, man. So I close my eyes. I have to, I leave. I, I, at this point, I find if I leave the light on and close my eyes, then I can... And, then it doesn't hurt as much. But if I shut the light off and try to close my eyes, then it's it for some reason it was just like painful. It hurt. Okay? So then I'm like, fuck, I gotta get some sleep, man. I gotta get up by eight o'clock. So anyway, 
6 o'clock rolls around, 7 o'clock. Around 7 o'clock it starts to die down, but barely any. 8 o'clock rolls around, it, it's dying down, it's dying down. I, I, now at this point, I'm... I still feel shitty. The panic attack has gone, but uh, I can still feel like this residual sort of like high feeling where I still got like the shivers and I'm aching and it's painful, but I'm also just extremely tired. That's the big part about it is I'm just so tired because I didn't get any sleep. So anyway, uh, 8 o'clock rolls around, and I'm like, I'm just going to... I don't have to be at work till 10, but I'd like to get in there by around 9.30. Anyway, so I wait till about 9... Just before 9 o'clock, I get up, I go to the toilet, try to take a shit. Don't really... Sh I don't think I shit, I can't remember. And then I'm like, okay, shower time. I take a shower, the shower feels fucking amazing. The shower feels good, even when you're not, like, panic, high... But when you just came out of a panicked high and then you shower, oh, it feels good. So the shower really like kind of brought me back to center. But for the rest of that day, between the, the tiredness and like the residual fucking impact that I had from that whole night, it just it ruined the whole day for me. Oh, it was a fucking nightmare. So then I realized... Because throughout that day, I had the sniffles. And then I started to get a sore throat. So I'm like, oh, shit. So I just... So here's here's what I came to the conclusion of as... Because then Friday rolls around and I'm like pretty much full-blown sick. But anyway, well, not really. By the time Saturday hits, I am. And then Sunday, I really am. But what I think happened was is... I was, when I ate those cookies, I was getting high, plus I was developing a sickness at the same time. So I'm pretty sure like the maniacally, the maniacal shivers and jaw clattering was me getting sick, but I was also getting high at the same time. So they were, they were like combating each other, you know, I, I'm not used to getting uh, that high off of edibles. So it was... So imagine like getting high, getting like maniacally high off edibles, plus getting sick at the exact same time. That is a terrible fucking combination. I shit you not, I've had plenty of bad trips in my life. Not just on weed, but on other stuff. And I they were nightmares. Oh, trust me, those were fucking nightmares. But that night that I had last week tops every single one of them by fucking far like if the whole time i'm thinking if if hell exists this is what it is i never want to experience that again and it just taught me a lesson uh obviously be careful with homemade edibles which i already knew that but i was just complacent and i didn't fucking uh i didn't take that into consideration as much as i should have and mostly because prior to that, I had homemade edibles from someone else, and they weren't strong at all. They were gummies. Yeah. They were gummy cubes. And when I got those, I was like, okay, I'm just going to take one. You know, I did the proper thing. I'm like, I'll take one just to see how it is. Took one, it didn't really do anything. Took two, it didn't really do anything. I took up to five at one point, it didn't do anything. And then I had a bunch of them, so then I ate a lot of them after that test and still didn't do anything so those were really weak so when i got the cookies i'm like oh, fuck it i can handle it then i guess and i just ate the two cookies stupidly i know better i know better i've been around i've been around homemade edibles before i know the damage that they can do so all i gotta say is fuck edibles dude fuck them i hate them they suck it's either too much or it's not enough. And even if you get the right amount that you want, you're still high for too long. It lasts too long. Fuck edibles, dude. Fuck them.
They don't. I don't. They don't cooperate with me. I wish I could be like one of those people that feel nothing when they eat an edible, because there are people like that. I know people like that. Fucking Jamie from uh, the Joe Rogan Experience. He doesn't feel shit. And I don't understand how Joey Diaz does it. Joey Diaz, how do you eat those fucking Death Stars, dude? He admits to the panic attacks, but fuck, man. It's too intense. Oh, it's bad. It's really... That was the worst. I will never do that again. Ever. Um, yeah. Wow. So then, like, the next... So then, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, it's now Tuesday. I'm still fucking sick. I'm not as sick as I was. But my voice is gone. Ah! Uh, it's actually starting to... No, it's not starting. As soon as I try to go in a higher, higher pitch, it just goes away. But if I just talk like this... You know, because at my work, I have to talk. So when I want to go, Hello! Hello! How are you? It doesn't come out. So uh, uh, if you want to experience hell... Figure out when you're starting to feel sick and take an obnoxious amount of edibles. Unless you have a high tolerance to edibles. But if you don't, uh, take a walk through hell and uh, tell me how it feels. Because I tell you what, I fucking... Yeah, I said enough. Fucking terrible. Absolutely miserable. It made me absolutely miserable. And then it got me thinking about... Uh, stop it. When I was born in 1994... Um, when I was... Uh, what the fuck was I going to say? Oh yeah, as a kid. Do you remember being as a kid? Being a kid... Remember getting sick as a kid, and how comfort like I, it was comforting. You know, it was so nice to get sick as a kid. Compared to how I got sick last week, you know, it really made me miss being sick as a kid. Because when you got sick as a kid, uh, here's how it went. Okay, as a kid, you're sick. Okay, you wake up in the morning, your mom or your dad or whoever is watching after watching you, you go, hey mom, I'm sick. She comes in, she takes your temperature, she's like, oh fuck, you're sick. And she's like, I guess, I guess you're going to stay home. Once you hear those words, you're like, yes! Now for me, my mother would go to work and I would just stay home by myself, which is fucking awesome. I loved it. <coughs> And here's why, okay? Because she'd say, you're staying home, okay? She'd give you some medicine. And, she, you know, I knew how to cook and shit, so I could do all that myself. But, uh, you know, depending on the situation, she'd have stuff prepared for me or depending on my age, whatever. Let's just say I'm like around 12. I get to stay home from school. Yes, fuck yeah. All right, she goes off to work. You're like, shit, I got the whole day to myself and I have no obligation to do any chores or anything because I'm sick so what do you do uh, get up take a piss in the morning okay go back to bed can watch TV but there isn't really any good shows on because it's daytime and that's not when the good scheduled TV's on because remember you can only watch TV uh, based off of what was on the schedule it wasn't like there was no streaming services back then. So you'd throw on fucking The Price is Right. Oh, fuck yeah. If you're watching The Price is Right. And you get bored. So you play some video games. You get bored of that. You, I don't know, get up, play some Legos. Do whatever, man. All right? Even like, but even though you were sick and feeling like shit, it was still fun to stay at home because you didn't have to go to school. Because school sucks ass. 
So, like, even even though you were aching and sore, maybe you were you had to get up and puke every now and then, but it still felt nice to just go back into that warm bed and just watch TV all day, all day, and then. <laughs> Your parents or your mom or your dad or your grandma or whoever would come home and they'd be like, how you doing? I'm like, I'm still sick. And then they'd make you something. They'd make you some crazy food and you'd eat it. I'm like, oh, yeah, dude. And then you still got the rest of the day to do whatever you want. And then, and then, uh, but the, but here's where the trauma kicks in. Now you got now the day passes and it's bedtime. Now the shitty part is the anxiety kicks in because you're like, fuck, now I gotta go back to school. Especially if you were sick on a Monday, right? You had Saturday off, you had Sunday off, you had Monday off because you were sick. Now you're getting used to being at home. Okay? So you 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 go to sleep at night, nine o'clock or whatever. Or um, it was always later than for that, later than that for me. So now, as you're going to sleep, you're like, "Fuck! I gotta go back to school tomorrow." Shh! Fuck! 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 All right. Now, if you're lucky, you can wake up the next day and still feel sick, or at least trick your parents into thinking you're sick. But for the most part, you're usually cured by then. And then you gotta go back to school, and that was the trauma that you got. And I'd take that over what I experienced on Wednesday. Oh, did it suck. It, it changed my life. It changed. I, I've talked about it to people. And I haven't went into like as much detail as I went in this time. But I shit you not, it changed my fucking life. So in the end, it was good. It's good to have those fucking traumatic experiences to a certain extent. You know, but like, oh my God, I never experienced that in my life. It was crazy, dude. Crazy. Anyway, let's move on. I've got a plan to make you see. Okay. Okay. So so UFC 300 just happened. This weekend. (laughs) And if I would have recorded an episode last week uh, without my crazy high experience, I would have had my predictions before the event. But guess what? Uh, I didn't. So, but luckily, I made this. I made this, okay? This is like my prediction, uh, my fight card prediction sheet. So the day of the fight, before the fights happened, I checked off who I thought was going to win. And let me just run you through this here. Okay, so there was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There were 13 fights, and I got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 of them correct. I got 8 out of 13 correct. Uh, I'll tell you which ones. So I got Andrade versus Rodriguez. I got right, which is Andrade. I don't know how to pronounce that. Every single fight on the prelims, I got correct. Bo Nickel, I got correct. Uh, the Chinese fight, I got correct. And Alex Pereira, I got right. Uh, but, dude, the BMF fight... Wow. I mean, I don't I don't need to talk about it anymore. You've heard enough about it, but fuck me, dude. I'm so happy I got to experience that shit. Unbelievable. I'm also really excited to see where Piera Pieta Alex Pieta. I'm excited to see where he goes because he's also fucking phenomenal. Obviously, his fight was not as exciting as uh the BMF fight. But fuck me, still a fucking amazing fight. All right, took out Hill in no time. Took him to fuck out in no time. And Yuri Prohaska, I'm excited to see where he goes. He's gonna have the belt in no time. Like, 
there's no way he's not going to have the belt. He's to, oh, he's so fucking awesome, dude. I love him. I don't want to talk too much about UFC because I'm not like I'm still new to it for the most part, but I just like to bring it up every now and then. I was born in 1994. We haven't watched a clip yet, so why don't we uh why don't I bless your little heart with a clip? Uh, so we opened the show with uh, World of T-Shirts. I don't even think I... Oh, maybe I did do it full screen. I don't know. But we're all feeling... I don't know how you guys feel about World of T-Shirts. We've been watching them a lot on here. Mostly because he's just showing up on my page all the time. And to be honest, right now my page is just swamped with UFC. I really got to fix the algorithm on it a bit because it's, it's too allocated towards UFC right now. Which is, yeah, it's not, it's not terrible. It could be worse. I like seeing UFC, but I've. It's like, I'll spice things up a bit, man. I want to go back to the crazy videos. So I might consider making two TikTok pages, but I don't know. Anyway, we all know World of T shirts, what he's up to. He's getting into some weird and wild shit. I, this is a video of him as a fucking kid doing the same sort of sh like still traveling around like he does as an adult. But this is him as a kid, and it just it makes you sad a little bit. This is a depressing podcast. Hello, you guys. I'm on Amtrak. I'm on the Amtrak train. I'm on my way to New York, Long Island. We're getting off at Penn Station, and and we will. And we and I I will be making a professional video of Square and Pay versus PayPal <laughs> along with my two originals. So I'm 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 right I'm heading towards Alexandria in Washington and I will be in New York around four fifty or so. Or four thirty. So, so right here, I love the scenery. So I'm making this video to tell you my status. Back to my piece of shit country. Well, that's that. It just sucks. <laughs> oh man, why is this episode so shitty, man? Ah, oh, because I used he used to be a kid, man. He used to be a little kid, you know, just still just riding around on trains, making videos, and now he's just a drunk fucking asshole. And it's like, god damn, man. Oh, okay, we gotta fucking yeah, let's let's lighten it up a bit here. All right. Off to a bad fucking start. After these messages, we'll be right back. Today's first sponsor of the day is Liquid Meth. When you see these tall boys all over social media called Liquid Meth, a lot of people want to know what they are. It may look like beer or some crazy energy drink, but it's not. It's Liquid Meth. It's actually meth in beverage form. That makes meth infused mountain spring water, low sugar sodas, and low sugar iced teas too. I've been drinking this stuff for a long time and I'm glad they're partnering with us because you can murder your thirst and your brain cells with liquid meth. It is delicious. I like a big can of liquid meth water because regular water sometimes is boring and lame. Thankfully, you can now drink it out of a big old tall boy. You can get free shipping of Liquid Meth's Mountain Water and meth-infused iced tea packs with Amazon Prime. Or grab a can or a case at your local 7-Eleven, Target, Walmart, or Whole Foods, or Instacart. Go to www.liquidmeth.com gizmo to check out their healthy, infinitely recyclable beverages and find your closest retailer. That's liquidmeth.com slash gizmo. Liquidmeth.com slash G-I-Z-M-O. 
Hello. <laughs> Fuck, that was good, dude. Oh my god, let's do that one more time, one more time, one more time. Come on, please. man that's so good that is so good I love it when people get creative with beats like what even was that I don't even know I don't even know what that was but I oh I love it uh, how many more videos do I got I got oh yeah <laughs> I got two more but before we do that how far are we into this? Oh man, we're only 35 minutes in. Uh, all right. So I'm going to start recommending podcasts. Uh, let me write down the one I want to recommend today. But I'm dun 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 McGregor's coming back against Chandler. Daniel Poirier is fighting for the belt, finally, against Islam. And I hope the fuck he gets it. Mind you, I like Islam, but I fucking, I... Oh, it'd be so nice to see Dustin have the belt. It'd also be nice to see Gaethje have an actual title. Uh, but, eh, he just lost the BMF title, so... But then, also... Uh, Strickland's coming back against Costa. It's going to be fucking awesome. Uh, who else was there? There was one other one, I thought. It doesn't matter. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'm going to start recommending podcasts. Every single episode. Because you know that's all I do with my life. Is watch podcasts. Watch and or listen to podcasts. So... The one I want to recommend to recommend today is Harry Mack's new podcast. It's brand new. He's only six episodes deep. Only six episodes deep. If you don't know Harry Mack, then you're a crack addict. Harry Mack. I need to get a Harry Mack. Shut up, Joe. I need to get a Harry Mack button. Um... But yeah, Harry Mack, he's, he's a rapper, but he's most specifically known for his freestyle raps. Just unbelievable, unbelievable at it. You give him three words, he'll fucking spit this crazy ass rhyme, and he'll integrate those three words into the rhyme throughout the whole rap effortlessly, like nothing, like butter on fucking toast. So anyway, Rick Glassman, which I've recommended his podcast, Take Your Shoes Off, also fucking phenomenal. Oh, it's very good. Very good podcast. So unique and original. And I just, I love, I'm basically recommending two podcasts right now. But Rick Glassman, he's, I relate to him so much. The way he analyzes things, the way he thinks about things. Like the way he's so organized about things, the way his OCD is about things, I relate so much and I love the way he thinks about things. And he's he's so good at staying on topic that even, <coughs> even, 
Even when he gets distracted, he'll always be able to come back. Always. It's very rare he'll forget. But when he does forget, he acknowledges that he forgets. And he's very good at, 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 at retracing his steps to get back to what it was that he was trying to talk about. Uh, so anyway, so uh, uh, Harry Mack has been on Take Your Shoes Off, Rick Glassman's podcast, two times. And, oh, they're fucking unbelievable episodes. Highly recommend. I recommend you watch those two episodes of Harry Mack on Take Your Shoes Off first before you check out Harry Mack's podcast. All right, but anyway, so Rick Glassman was on Harry Mack's podcast, his sixth, his sixth episode that was just released. It's a good episode. It's a really great episode. Ow. But just keep in mind, Harry Mack has just started podcasting, so he's still pretty fresh to it. But at this point in the episode, they started talking about pictures, and I love this exact topic, and I want to talk about it. But first, I want you to hear their perspective. Insulting other people or how dope you are. It's like, <laughs> it's like exactly. I, I feel it's like there's two options. I feel that way. Like I used to do a bit about how when, when people take pictures, there's two options. They would either... or. Yeah. They're either giving peace signs or flicking off. And it's like, yes. even smiling, I sometimes think, like, oh, hold on one sec. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, just take yeah. the picture of, of the moment. Yes. Yeah, it's just, it, they should all be candid, it's true. Or at least <coughs> more candid. Yeah, but anyway, I, I'm sorry. I, go, go no, on. no, no. I, I struggle with the serious face. Wait. Face in pictures, because sometimes everyone else was doing the serious face, and I'm just, you know. No, dude. You do that. Yeah. Yeah, here's, here's my advice to, yeah. to, to, to the youth. Yeah. Um, Speak. Uh, when you take when you're taking pictures, um, you don't have to smile. If you don't want to smile, don't smile. Sure. But also smile. If you if it's if it's not candid, if you're looking, yeah. Smile, and then when, when don't look at it. Yeah. Don't be like, let me see if I like. If this is for a specific thing that you need, of course. Yeah. But just take the picture because you're not gonna like the way you look. Yeah. Um, as they say in Men's Warehouse, you're not going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. No, that's not what they say. I'm not knocking them. They're great. Maybe. I don't know. But, like, um, uh, and by the way, if this were my podcast, just in case people don't know, I would make sure to put up an image of the Men's Warehouse uh, oh, yeah. thing. You can like the way you look. I guarantee well, yeah, it. Yeah, we got that. Uh, you don't need – I'm just saying, like, that would be my thing. Yeah. That's a very small example. Yeah. yeah. But, like, in my head, I'm always thinking, like, you don't have to get the reference. But if – Okay, he's going off topic. But <laughs> Pictures, dude. Pictures. My whole life, I have taken pictures. I've tried mostly in my younger years of growing up. I wanted to capture my life all the time. I would. I want to take pictures all the time, and I want to record what's going on. If I was going to a museum, I would take my camera. If they would let me. If I was you know, going to a theme park. If I was going on vacation. If I was. If I was going uh, uh, wherever. Dude, a school trip. Uh, if I was doing anything, I'd bring my camera and I would record it. All right, but back when I was a kid, it was a obscure thing to do that. No one had cell. People had cell phones and they had cameras, but they were shitty cameras. So no one utilized the camera on the phone to record what's going on. So because of that, there was no incentive to just record your life. So, by me bringing a camera everywhere, recording all my shit, I was the odd one out. Okay? But, I, I would always record the candid moments. As, because as a child, even as a child, I knew that was the, the, the better footage. That was the better picture. That's what made sense. And, you know, as I got older uh, and cell phones, smartphones became more of a uh, uh, po uh, more, more uh, mainstream thing to the point where everyone had one. It then became completely normal and almost uh, ne a necessity for every single person who has a phone, which is everyone, to film and record every single moment 
of their life. And when that started to happen, I, it pushed me away from it because now it's not unique. And now everyone has, has done it so much that it has, uh, it ruined the, um, the magic of it. All right, but that's a, that's beside the point of what Rick and Harry are talking about. And what I wanted to touch on is that exactly what they're talking about. That's what everyone does. It's either or tongue out with the piece and we're taking a picture and it's like, stop. It's disgusting and I hate it. You go on Instagram, you go to a party, let's say. Someone's going to pull out their phone, they're going to put their arm around you, and they're going to go, fuck off, all right? And then they look at me like, oh, you don't like, you don't like your, your picture taken? It's like, dude, uh, I don't give a fuck if you take my picture, but I'm not playing this stupid fucking game. I do a fucking podcast. I've done almost 200 episodes. I've been filming my whole, my, my fucking life. My whole life is on YouTube. All right. Of course, I don't mind being on camera, but I'm not doing this stupid fucking game. All right. I'm not going to sit here and put up a. And mind you, I have done it lots. But in the moment of doing it and afterwards, I'm like, this is so cringe. This is stupid. This is unoriginal and it's lame. Why does this have to be the way that we take pictures of each other? Why can't why can't it just be like we're sitting around a fire, someone pulls out a camera, takes a picture, puts the phone away. Why do you have to pull the phone out and be like, okay guys, I'm taking a picture. Everybody look at the camera and say cheese. Kaching. Or I guess it'd be more like you know? No. I hate it, and it, and I also hate how everyone just falls into that line, and they fall into that rhythm, not even with pictures, but with anything, you know, even just look at social media in general. Why do we think, how do people, people just, are, there's, when you, when you say people are sheep, like, it's so true. And uh, I really, sure, I fall into the sheep patterns, okay, I'll admit it, we're, we're all human, but sometimes you just, you step back and you look at it and you're like, how? How can you, how can you be so stupid? How can you fall into line so easily? Like even looking at social media, specifically Facebook, all these like rant and rave pages or even just Facebook posts in general they all have the same cadence they all have the same rhythm where they're like they're either bitching about something in their life or they're praising themselves about some sort of accomplishment that they did just to get attention it's just for attention either way and I I hate how every single person nowadays are attention-seeking whores. And you could make the argument that I'm making a podcast because I'm an attention-seeking whore. But no, it's not. It's because I love podcasting. All right? And plus, I don't get fucking views. All right? I guess that's not the argument. But the argument here is like, whether you're bitching on Facebook or praising your life, you're looking for attention either way. And I've, I've, I've lost friends over social media, which, and I'll explain, I've lost friends because I didn't interact with their social media or I ignored it or I skipped over a Snapchat story and they were like, hey, uh... What did you think of that video I posted on Snap? And I'm like, I didn't see it. And they're like, they look and they're like, well, it says you saw it. And I'm like, oh, I must have skipped it. And it offended them. It offended that person. So much so. Basically to the point where this person said, 
that I don't care about the friendship and uh, obviously I think so little of them that I would skip past their Snapchat story, blah, 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 all this bullshit. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Like, what? Our friendship is not based off a fucking Snapchat story. Who gives a fuck if I looked at your Snapchat story? I don't give a fuck. I don't give two shits about what the fuck you post on Snapchat. Even if you send it directly, well, if you send it directly to me, maybe we can make some sort of argument. But it wasn't even directly to me. It was on the story and you're mad at me because I didn't fucking watch it. Are you kidding me? Are you that fucking desperate? And that's just how people are nowadays. <coughs> and it sucks. It's so shitty. Listen, if you want to make a piece of content and put it online, great. Do it. Fall into the line. But don't get mad at someone because they're not paying attention to you on your social media. Do you want to know why? Because nobody gives a fuck. Okay? It's all bullshit. All right? Especially your friends and family. Oh, man. We're way off topic, aren't we? Anyway, I just hope we get to a point where taking pictures with your friends and family is not about striking a pose and smiling and putting up the peace sign or putting up the finger. We need to put an end to it. It's stupid. Stop it. You have a camera. Take a picture. Why do we gotta why do we gotta smile? Stop and smile. Just take the fucking picture. Alright? And yes, you know, Rick Rick went over the the prerequisites where yes, sometimes you need to do that, but yada yada yada. But for the most part, you don't have to. So fuck off. I'm sick, okay? I can talk like this when I'm sick. <coughs> Here's an example of using of camera properly. This is real, by the way. This is real. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. I just... Wow. <laughs> I want to vomit just watching this. I'm going to get claimed for that song. I hope it was worth it. That was real. That was a real wedding. There's 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 two people in the audience. Both of them are in wheelchairs. <coughs> uh, the only normal lurking, looking person is the one who's doing the, what do you call it? The MC person, the person reading the, the shit. If this, like this is the most trailer park shit I've ever seen in my life and they're not even in a trailer. I just, I don't even know what to say. I'm sick as a dog right now. I can't even come up with anything. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's still going. Okay. Oh, for fuck's sakes. <sighs> I, I... I uh. see this is awkward, isn't it? 
Normally I'd have something to say, but I I got nothing. I've got nothing because I want to end this shit because I need to take a nap. Okay, we got to find a puke video. We got to end it off with some puke. Show me some vomit. Ah! <laughs> Wait, I don't know which one to watch. <laughs> oh, she actually... <laughs> oh no. This guy's puking though. <laughs> what, he doesn't like mayo? Please. That would be easy. You're nasty. Yeah, eat him, I. What's wrong with mayonnaise? A lot of vinegar in there, that's for damn sure. <laughs> Come on, dude, eat it. <laughs> yeah! got some puke. <laughs> Dude, that came out so hard. That came out so strong. <laughs> Hold on. I need to favorite this. How do I do that? Right here. That was good. That was good. That was good. Oh, that was good. Okay, guys, let's do some dancing. Let's show me my move. Okay, so like I said, I was sick this episode. So lots of talk and not a lot of other stuff. Um, not really a lot of laughs this episode. But again, I just had to get this out. Because if I didn't, we would have went two weeks without an episode uploaded. We might even already be at that point. Uh, we can't go any longer than that. Not allowed. Uh, I'll hopefully be able to stream some more God of War this week. And, uh, yeah. That's it for this episode of the Dynamite Kismo Podcast. I hope you enjoy it. Please like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell. Hit that bell. And, uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.